What's up, Fruit Bitches? Wherever you may be, however you may be watching, thank you for giving me some of your time. And joining me, as always, is my hetero life mate, Mr. Jeremy Wolner, for the review of Chapter 14, The Tragedy of the Mandalorian. What is going on, my friend? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, there was some tragedy because my, uh, my little cold heart actually uh, broke a little bit. Yeah, a relatively sure, we'll get into that. Yeah, a relatively short episode, only 32 minutes. Most of them run about 40-ish. Uh, but this one, I mean, it so much happened so fast that it felt like this episode really did go by almost in the blink of an eye. But let's uh let's get right to it. We we open up with the Razor Crest going to what I can only describe as Jedi Stonehenge. And upon arriving there, Jin Jardin, or Jin, Din Jardin, the Mandalorian, places the child on the Seeing Stone, uh, just as he was told to, and the Force obviously starts to do its thing. Now, uh, very quickly after, like I said, things happen very, very quickly in, in this episode. Very quickly after, they are joined by a couple of unexpected visitors, and right away we are treated to Boba Fett and Fennec. Fett and Fennec offer Mando protection for himself and for and for Grogu. I'm still trying to get used to that name. But before he can decide, the issue is forced when two I'm transports <laughs> you're not when two transports full of stormtroopers decide to pop in and a gunfight ensues. Now during this gunfight, Boba Fett actually gets to his armor at the Razor Crest and absolutely wrecks shop. Uh, how about that shot of him shooting down that transport and everything that he did over the course of that entire gunfight? Uh I mean <laughs> I was sitting there like, yep, Boba Fett still got it, man. He's he's back, baby. I'm glad he got in there, got his armor, and you know, kind of turned the tide of that whole battle. It and if it didn't, you know, click with Mando yet, like, yeah, this dude knows what he's doing. This is his armor. He knows how to work that shit. Yeah, he he very clearly knew what the hell he was doing. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was absolutely fantastic. Everything that. Uh, just getting to see him in in full Mandalorian garb again and just absolutely killing it was was fantastic. I'm behind in a couple of pictures, but yeah, there's there's a shot of him getting ready to just he just backhands this one stormtrooper. Well, one of the great visuals, and I wish I could have gotten it. I thought to grab right. a picture of it is when he first gets his armor and he kind of jumps down behind the stormtrooper. It slowly kind of rotates a little bit while he stands up behind the stormtrooper and he just backhands him like nobody's freaking business. It was right. just, it was a supreme display of his superiority over these stormtroopers. Now, uh, obviously, there's a gigantic gunfight that ensues, and uh, it doesn't work out very well for our uh, for our good guys. What ends up happening is these uh, Moff Gideon ends up sending in the Dark Troopers. They're basically these uh, these crazy crazy Ultron Vader looking bots <laughs> that swoop down and take the yeah. child before <laughs> the Mandalorian can get back up there and try to defend him again. Now, it kind of makes sense at this point for the good guys to have their backs against the wall. It's kind of a uh, it's kind of like what uh, Empire Strikes Back was to the original trilogy. Yeah. It's just, you have to have this point in the story where things look bleak for the good guys. And it's definitely looking kind of bleak right now. Uh, what did you think of just kind of the whole progression of the way things happened when they were on the planet while he was reaching out with the Force? I know they said they had a tracking beacon on, so I was kind of wondering when that was going to come to fruition. Like, oh, see, they're right behind him, and now they're going to swoop in. Now, having had these Dark Troopers ready to go. Like I said, a few minutes before we started, someone was talking about, why did Amanda leave his jetpack? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was more concerned with the kid and he just kind of ran up the hill, you know, but maybe I thought he, maybe he still wouldn't have stood a chance, but if he had it to be able to fly up there. But I kind of thought, like you said, this is, you know, I, I, I'm heartbroken, but I'm like, yeah, I know this kind of thing happens. Like now we're left off with, oh crap. Now the bad guys have, have the kid. And now we're kind of at a, a bleak moment and also um, a bleak moment of uh, the, the Razor Crest getting absolutely obliterated, which broke my heart. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, as, <laughs> as things progress, and again, they progress very, very quickly in a very, very short episode. This was almost like a movie trailer is what it felt like. Now, after the events at Jedi Stonehenge, Din Jardin ends up going to Cara Dune and asks her to help locate an old frenemy from Season 1, Bill Burr's Mayfield. So, obviously, he's he's trying to go get him so he can plot some kind of an attack to try to go get Grogu back. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, sometimes you just you need the right kind of people, you know, to get shit done, I guess. I like yeah, Bill Burr. 
I like Bill Burr and I like this right. character, so I'm I'm ready to see him come back here and just be an absolute asshole, but still kind of do what he does because he was a sharpshooter for the Empire, yeah. as I recall. So I'm I'm ready to see him come in and not only do the stuff with the gun, but also just the quips, the Bill Burr, everything, everything about Bill Burr. I really love. I think he's funnier than hell. Yeah, and I know it's supposed to be a little uh, conflict-ish point where you know Kara's now she's cool official, so. She's kind of like, well, as much as I want to help you, I can't. There are some rules I got to follow. But, of course, you name drop, hey, they fucking took the kid. And she's like, yeah, fuck these people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think, I think that moment when he says they got the kid is when she kind of puts all that aside. So I really don't think that she's going to necessarily struggle with the idea of, do I help him against my new role as the town sheriff? Or do I just go right. ahead and do what I've always done? I think she's she's probably going to be all in. I could tell by the expression in her face as soon as he said oh, that, yeah. that she was just ready to go do whatever she had to do to protect the kid. That is a nice shot. It was just, he's like, hey, they've got the kid. And you see her and you're like, you, you already know what she's going to do. Like, yep, nope, I got you, man. <laughs> Well, you know, at the end of the episode, we see Moff Gideon make his way to the cell that holds Grogu, and we see Grogu just using his force powers to throw these two stormtroopers around like ragdolls. That was such a funny... <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was... It was, it, always... it was... It was like watching Yoda do stuff back in the day, the way he would just throw people around if they were giving him hassles. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. This ends up leading to Moff Gideon kind of monologuing a little bit, and that's kind of where the episode leaves us. It just leaves us pondering exactly what's going to happen from here on out now i did look into it and there are eight episodes listed for this season just like season one so we've only got two episodes left so whatever is going to happen is going to happen very quickly and it's going to happen it's going to hit hard and fast these next two episodes so i don't know if it's going to leave us with much of a cliffhanger i mean it's it's possible there's still stuff out there but I mean, th- these next couple episodes are going to be... Uh, honestly, it looks like the last four episodes of this season where we got introduced to the first real Jedi that we saw in the last episode with Dar- Zarya Dawson's character. Uh, this episode that just blew by, and then whatever is going to happen in the next two episodes. These last four episodes are going to happen just bang, bang, bang. They're really going to pour it all on us. What do you think this next two episodes are going to bring? And Do you think it ends in a cliffhanger? Or do we see a, a kind of a resolution to this season just with a lead-in to next season? Well, with him being captured this quick, or I guess now at this point in the season, I mean, I know a lot can still happen in like just a couple episodes, but maybe there might be some sort of cliffhanger I could see. Maybe, uh, maybe the thing with uh, Grogu being captured by the Empire might get resolved, or at least you know they're working towards it. And like you said, with uh, Ahsoka, maybe, maybe while he was up there doing his little. Uh, force buddha shit maybe a jedi somewhere heard him and maybe that could you know play into the next couple episodes maybe somebody different we haven't seen or you know maybe that'll uh, end up helping them turn the tide a little bit i think that's going to end up being something that comes to fr- ends up coming to fruition next season i don't think we're going to see any more jedis this year now we we may see a little scene at the very end of the last episode where some jedi somewhere senses him and it may not yeah. identify who that Jedi is. So I think that might be the little stinger at the end of this season that's going to carry over into next season. But I, I don't know if there's enough time to not only go get Grogu back from Moff Gideon, but to also get him, but to get him back and as well introduce another Jedi or maybe even a, a significant amount of information on whatever next year's storyline is going to be. I don't know. But uh, I could be wrong. Who the hell knows? But, you know, you said something earlier. Uh, R.I.P. to the Razor Crest. Man, that thing got blown to hell and back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm kind of glad now that at least Boba got his armor back before that fucking happened. You know? Well, yeah. It, it, God, it's it's just so sad. I mean, <laughs> the Razor Crest has become. Yeah. <laughs> uh, over, the, over the course of watching the show, I've begun to look at the Razor Crest this, almost the same way I look at the Millennium Falcon or or Luke's X Wing. Yeah. It's, it's in and of itself. It's kind of a character. Uh, and so, but yeah, speaking of uh, uh, iconic ships, when uh, Mando looks over the hill there and he sees the Slave One fly by, I was just like, oh, oh my god, that's that's Boba Fett. That's definitely Boba Fett. You can't tell me it's not. I'm glad his ship's still out there flying around, and that's uh, kind of the cataclyst of like, hey, well, the Razor Crest is gone, but we still have, have this. So you win some, you lose some. Yeah, I, I recognized that ship the moment that it flew onto screen. I was like, okay, we're getting the Fett back. Here comes yeah. the Fett. 
Uh, you know, the other thing that uh, I want to point out is Ming-Na. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, like, who else, who else could it be? Well, yeah, the other thing I want to point out is Ming-Na Wen's character. I mean, she's basically just playing Agent May from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's just doing it with a different name, and she's doing it out in space. Yeah, but I'm totally cool yeah. with that, because she's, kind of, she's kind of a badass. So I'm totally cool with her basically well, playing yeah. the same character. She plays it well, so, I mean, I can't really be mad if she does it, you know, does it well. She does also point out that it looks like that Boba Fett did some mechanical enhancements to her after he found her on Tatooine very badly injured. She opens up this little uh-huh. port in her abdomen and it just shows a lot of hardware and, you know, servos and moving parts. And I was like, damn, that must feel weird. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that's kind of awkward, but, I mean, doesn't. It's not out of the realm of, you know, Star Wars. That's, you know, that's what we can do with people like, you know, Vader or General Grievous. Hell, even Luke had a fake hand. (laughs) Right. So, you know. Well, anyway, any any final Uh, thoughts on this episode? Just kind of like where it might be going for the next couple of next couple of episodes and, you know, just kind of where things have gone for season two overall. uh, uh, I'm excited for uh, this team up with. uh, Boba Fett and the Mando, because I was, as I was thinking, sitting there thinking, I'm like, yeah, you know, you really can't have a show like Mandalorian and not have Boba Fett. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm very, very happy that he actually came back into the show. I'm now. like, I, he looked a little weird in the armor, and I'm like, this dude's, he's a beefy dude. He filled up that armor. <laughs> yeah, he did, but you know, it, it fits him, and especially like you know that scene that's on there right yeah. now with when the uh, two transports crash as he's just giving that look back to the camera. That was that was a phenomenal scene, and it was something that looked like it was right out of one of the original trilogy films. So I I loved it. I thought it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, this this episode went so fast. I I actually was when I watched it again today before we started filming. I got a glimpse at how long it was, and I was like, "Damn, thirty two minutes, really?" And I know that they kind right. of vary in time from like thirty minutes up to about you know forty five somewhere in that range. That they do kind of right. vary a lot, but man, I mean this. Honestly, it felt like a trailer. It just it just went so fast because there was just so much that happened and right because, from the jump all the way through the end. It was really hard to kind of catch your breath through this episode, but it was fantastic. Yeah, and given what happened, like oh crap, the child got kidnapped, and now we're kind of like you said, they're they're kind of in a hard place right now. And it leaves me and being that quick, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's over. No, no, no! <laughs> Don't put him in little tiny shackles. <laughs> you know. Those little teeny tiny shackles that blew, blew around his hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's just how dangerous yeah. he is. I mean, even though he hasn't been fully trained with the Force, I mean, he's still throwing stormtroopers around like ragdolls. I mean, even yeah, and yeah. even Moff Gideon respects his power because when he walks in, he, he immediately recognizes, let him throw these stormtroopers around because it'll tire him out, and then I won't have to deal with him. And right. then he goes and, you know, <laughs> opens up the dark saber in front of him and starts teasing him with it or whatever the hell he was doing while he was monologuing. Yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely going right. to find out because they are. He already said he's sending a message back to Doctor Pershing at the end of this episode. So mm-hmm. hopefully they'll be able to go get him before uh, before they're able to do any serious damage <coughs> to this kid. And uh, who the hell knows what what the rest I just of the season? I want to see him snap a little bit. I know, like you said, Moff Gideon knows he'll get tired, but I wanted to see him maybe just kind of come into his power a little bit and just kind of snap and be like, ah, "Gotcha!" And like just force choke Moff Gideon right there. <laughs> I want to, yeah, I want to, I want to see him force choke somebody at some point in, in this season, but uh, we may have to wait until he gets a little bit older. But uh, yeah, I, I think this is this yeah. is not this was not as good an episode as the Jedi, but. It was very, was, yeah. It was very exciting. It was packed full of things that are really pushing the story, the story forward very, very quickly. And uh, I'm, I'm really, I, I still think this is one of my favorite Star Wars properties. I mean, I, I think it goes original trilogy, and then probably this. This has just been amazing the way it's yeah. been done by Filoni and by uh, uh, John Favreau and all, all the guys that have done all this. It's just been amazing. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the next couple episodes. And it feels like we got to wait forever until Season 3. I mean, I'm already starting to look forward to what Season 3 is going to bring because there's so much out there still that they can do. I mean, do we see well, more Jedis? Sure, right? Do we see, you know, uh, what is it, Maz Katana, the Katie Sackhoff's character we got a couple episodes ago? When do we see her come back? Because I mean, we can't just have them for one episode and then disappear. That would seem like a huge waste. But uh, yeah. yeah, there's 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 so much to this show, so much to unpack, and they're doing it without really, without really resting on the original trilogies or the movies, which I think is fantastic. They're able to expand the universe out a lot more and tell a lot of really cool stories. But 
yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about all this. But, I mean, obviously, I, I care about what you guys watching think. So go down in the comments below and let us know what you guys think. I mean, me and Jeremy have been picking apart these episodes one by one for all of Season 2. So go down in the comments below let us know what you guys think. Jeremy, say goodbye to all the viewers. Goodbye, viewers. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with us all. We'll see you next time. Bye. It ends up sending uh, Din Jardin back to Cara Dune, where he asks her to help locate. Oh, goddamn! Are you fucking serious? Oh my gosh, I'm <sighs>